Luca Guaranino is following up Call Me By Your Name with a project that's deeply personal to him. And it's one that made Quentin Tarantino cry. It's a remake of one of the most legendary horror films of all time, Dario Argento's Suspiria. Bad luck isn't brought by broken mirrors, but by broken minds. Released in 1977, the stylized fairy tale nightmare follows Susie Banyan, an American ballet student who attends a dance academy in Germany, only to discover it's a front for a coven of witches. Susie, do you know anything about it? In honor of the new Suspiria's release, we're going to look at what made Dario Argento's 1977 film so mesmerizing, and how Guadagnino's non-traditional remake is an homage to the feeling the original Suspiria gave him, a feeling that would profoundly impact his directorial style. The illicitness of it and the incredible freedom of Dario were really empowering me very much. Before we go on, we want to tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor. Mubi is a curated film streaming service with a twist. You get 30 films per month, a new film every day. It's a hand-picked selection of movie gems from around the world. We're huge fans of Mubi here at Screen Prism, so click the link in our description below to get a full month of Mubi for free. Skepticism is the natural reaction of people nowadays, but magic is ever-present which means that magic is everywhere. By the way, if you notice that dialogue from the original seems out of sync, that's because during filming, everyone spoke in their own native languages, and it was all dubbed into English later. Argento began his filmmaking career working in the tradition of giallo, a horror film subgenre that peaked in popularity in 1970s Italy. The term giallo, which translates to yellow in English, stems from a line of pulp mystery novels with yellow covers that were published in Italy starting in 1929. The archetypal giallo film combines elements from detective fiction with bloody, drawn-out murder sequences opulent visuals, jarring soundscapes, and typically a female lead. Suspiria was very much born out of Giallo. Everything is over the top, but instead of being strictly detective fiction, it has supernatural subject matter, so it builds on and transcends the genre. Suspiria is the first film in Argento's Three Mothers trilogy, about a trio of malevolent witches with the power to manipulate events around the world. This concept came from Thomas de Quincey's Suspiria de Profundis, an 1845 collection of psychological fantasy essays influenced by the author's visions on opium. Argento and his screenwriter, and partner at the time, Daria Nicolodi, wanted a tone of perverted innocence, so they studied stories of the European occult and watched Disney fairy tales like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and Alice in Wonderland. It all seems so absurd. Suspiria isn't to be watched, but experienced. It's an acid trip in a haunted mansion, a beautiful nightmare that you don't want to wake up from. Plot and character development are of little importance. Do not be concerned, it's nothing. What makes the film so captivating is the feeling it gives viewers. No, but I have a strange feeling that somebody already told me about it. Or something similar, I can't. Guadagnino spoke of the corporeal fear it gave him. Suspiria showed Guadagnino how movies could, quote, upset somebody in a beautiful way. As a director, this inspired him to follow Argento's lead, to make films that viewers experience through the body, instead of just through the mind or emotions. The language of Suspiria is primarily visual. We might not learn much about Susie from what she has to say, a lot of strange things are happening. But we feel how she feels when she's scared, when she knows something's not right. The visuals, from the movement of the camera, to the lighting and color palette, to the mise-en-scene, work in tandem to overwhelm the viewers and transport us to another world. Argento and cinematographer Luciano Tovoli took a dramatic, experimental approach to give the film the look of a dark fairy tale. They opted for a palette of bold primary colors, the artificiality of the light representing the presence of the supernatural. Tovoli achieved this by shining strong lights through makeshift screens made of colored velvets and tissue paper, which he placed uncomfortably close to the actors' faces. To produce a color scheme reminiscent of Snow White, the film was processed in three-strip technicolor, an old-fashioned technique that gave The Wizard of Oz its vibrant, cartoonish colors. 
The production design was heavily influenced by expressionist paintings and films, so we see geometric shapes, textured backgrounds, and architecture of odd proportions. The ceilings in the academy, for instance, are so high that they nearly swallow the dancers wandering below, suggesting the girl's vulnerability in this environment. And the camera is constantly in motion. It's as if the viewer is floating through someone else's dream. Murder sequences are shot from impossible angles, making us feel like helpless onlookers to the victim's fates. Like the film's visuals, the score by Goblin plays both atmospheric and symbolic roles. even from the opening scene. As Susie walks toward the airport exit, eerie music stops and starts as the door opens and closes. Building a tension that makes it feel like Susie, and by extension the viewer, are being pulled into an alluring nightmare. When it was announced that Luca Guadagnino was remaking Suspiria, he was met with skepticism from diehard fans of the original. How could someone attempt to recreate such a singular film, the realization of Argento's directorial vision? Luckily, this wasn't Guadagnino's goal. He called the new Suspiria a cover version. He's paying homage to the experience he had watching Suspiria as a 14-year-old. I always wanted to make horror films. I'm a big, big scholar of horror films. That, that's what really want. I want to be a horror movie director, yeah. The 2018 Suspiria is an entirely different film that conjures a different type of feeling. But like its predecessor, it gets under your skin and leaves a mark. A piece about rebirths the inevitable pull that they exert, and our efforts to escape them. The new Suspiria has the same basic premise. A young and seemingly naive Susie travels to Germany to study at a dance academy. But this time, it's located in a divided Berlin instead of Freiburg. The year is 1977, when the original film was released. Outside of the Academy's walls, the militant group the Red Army Faction is engaged in bombings and shootouts with the local government, in a period of violent activity that would become known as the German Autumn. This historical context informs the movie's themes, visuals, and plot. Mirroring the, the story of Susie Banyan and Madame Blanc and this coven of witches with the, with the, with the hatred and the violence and the and the division that was in the reality of the times and in that place. Argento and Nicolodi's screenplay had a thin, gory plot, classic of gothic horrors. But David Kajanik's screenplay has much more narrative depth. The story barely resembles its source material, only nods to it. Structured in six acts and an epilogue, layered with symbolism and side plots, the new Suspiria is an hour longer than the original. And it explores the medium of dance much more. When you dance the dance of another, you make yourself in the image of its creator. The movement of the dancers plays a key role in the process of witchcraft. The dancers even perform along the points of a pentagram duct taped to the floor. The choreography was influenced by Pina Bausch and Martha Graham, resulting in a style of dance that, as Madame Blanc says, is about breaking the prettiness in things. And fittingly for a remake, there's a thematic tension between the old way and the new way of doing things. The feelings of trauma, shame, and oppression that permeated the German autumn served as the influence for the film's visuals. The end result is a depressive blend of earth tones, muted grays, greens, and browns. The production and costume designers took a naturalistic approach, working with props and intricately patterned fabrics to make the film feel like an artifact from 1977 Germany, as opposed to a period piece. Needless to say, the aesthetic mottos of these two Suspirias differ dramatically. Argento's was a more is more attitude, an assault on the senses. You wanted to kill Elena Marcus! <laughs> Hell is behind that door! Guadagnino's is a quiet and restrained approach, conjuring a feeling that slowly burns under the viewer's skin. The only moments in Suspiria that visually recall Argento's over-the-top giallo sensibilities occur in Susie's nightmare sequences, rendered with fractured camera work and disturbing imagery. 
Watching one of these dreams unravel is like dealing with a repressed memory that surfaces with a vengeance. As quickly as the memory began, it ends, and we return to the muffled imagery of mundanity. But we don't forget what we've seen. Radiohead's Tom York produced songs for the score, and he took a fittingly understated approach, creating haunting, introspective melodies. York was a fan of the original soundtrack by Goblin, and he borrowed their technique of repeating motifs to build dread. There's a way of repeating in music which, which can hypnotize, and I kept thinking to myself it was a form of uh, making spells. The old and new versions of Suspiria exist in different worlds, but their makers share a common directorial philosophy. The original Suspiria opened Guadagnino's eyes to what cinema could do and inspired him to take an Argento-esque approach as a director, valuing boldness and collaboration, creating films to be experienced from within, and deliberately using style and technical knowledge to put viewers in a particular mind-body state. In Argento's case, this was a deep bodily fear, provoked by horrifying sequences that are too beautiful to look away from. In Guaranino's, it's a burden to carry and memories to repress, wrapped in a realistic historical moment. By remaking Suspiria, Guaranino was essentially saying thank you to a film that continues to impact his work as a director. The new Suspiria offers a fruitful model for filmmakers who want to pay tribute to the directors and films that made them. It tells us, don't try to remake the past, but offer your own perspective for the future. It's coming. We're gonna get rid of that bitch of an American girl. Vanish. Just vanish. Make her disappear. Understand? Hi guys, this is Grace, the newest member of the Screen Prism team. And today, I want to talk to you about one of our favorite places to watch movies, MUBI. MUBI is a treasure trove of films from around the globe. Every day, a new film is added and the oldest is taken away. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, MUBI is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard-to-come-by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser-known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films and there are no ads ever. And if Suspiria has you in the mood to go back and look at more classic horror films, right now on MUBI, it's Horrific October, MUBI's annual spotlight on horror. This year's slate features genre greats like Michael Mann, David Cronenberg, and George A. Romero. And for those of you who live in the UK, MUBI will be releasing Luca Guadagnino's remake of Suspiria in UK cinemas on November 16th. For tickets and details, you can visit suspiriamovie.co.uk. We can't recommend MUBI highly enough. You can try it out for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.